When David Kale was diagnosed with terminal cancer, he was relieved he'd made plans to pay for his funeral. There was an ad on TV about a funeral plan, and I thought being single, that's something I need so the family wouldn't have to worry about it. Almost two decades after taking out the policy, the former actor was shocked to learn he'd signed up for insurance and not a prepaid funeral. He was told he must pay $43 a fortnight until he dies to keep the coverage, despite already paying $20,000, which is more than the policy is worth. If they said it was a life insurance, I wouldn't have taken it out. But because it was a funeral plan, that's how they got people. After telling his story in the local paper, his insurer gave him a refund of $4,000 and cut his premiums to $2 a fortnight. I think the government need to step in, put a regulation on to it. Help your family pay for your funeral. With your Consumer insurance. advocates say these companies target vulnerable people like Mr Kale in daytime television ads. And many customers don't understand what they're signing up for. Many of them have paid more than the benefit that their family would ultimately get. Um, and it often gets to the point where they can't afford the premiums anymore, but they feel stuck because they've been paying for so long and they don't want to lose everything. In 2014, ASIC found insurers only pay out on a third of premiums collected and the cost of an average annual funeral policy quadruples for consumers aged over 50. Separate research suggests someone taking out a policy at this age could pay $140,000 for a $6,000 benefit if they live to 80. After the 2018 Banking Royal Commission called on the regulator to shut down junk funeral insurance, insurers had to get a licence. The most well-known example, Upla targeted Indigenous people and collapsed, owing policyholders millions. The issues that we see are similar to what we saw before the collapse of Uplay. It's really time to start thinking about whether or not these products should be sold at all. Insurance Line's parent company, Tal, refused the ABC's request for an interview. A spokeswoman said the nature of insurance is some people pay more in premiums when they claim and others pay less. Industry body, the Council of Australian Life Insurers, also declined the request for an interview. It pointed to its new self-regulating code of practice, which says insurers must clearly explain the product is not a savings plan. There needs to be increased regulation or at least in increased disclosure. OK, I'll take it off and you can fold it. Jill and Alan Brown have already paid insurance line about $22,000. The funeral cover only worth $19,000 feel a little bit foolish that I signed up with them to start with, but I would like to warn anybody else not to, not to go into it. So this is all the letters that we've got from Tal, from the insurance people. After months of legal talks, Tal has agreed to reduce the Browns' premiums from $90 to $15 a fortnight until Jill turns 90. I feel as if they're cheating everybody and not coming, you know, not telling the truth upfront about how much it eventually will cost people. Jill's unsure if she'll accept Tal's latest offer, but if she doesn't, they're set to lose it all.